Okay, here's my latest astro photography piece of gear. Got this back in November and it was very expensive. Here's the Daystar Quark Chromosphere model. And I wish I would have purchased this back around 2019 when it was not as expensive as it is as it is, as it is now since the pandemic set in because the prices have never gone down after, after the pandemic. But this is the Chromosphere model that a lot of people are using. And I also had to get a, uh, this is the ASI, uh, this is the 432 monochrome camera that a lot of people are using for solar uh, solar uh, images and everything. And also came with a ZWO tilt adapter. So I had to learn about tilting the camera. See, it's tilted now so you don't get the Newtonian rings and stuff like that. But the Daystar Quark Chromosphere is connected to, this is another scope I just picked up. I'm not sure if I pronounce, pronounce this correctly, but it's S. B Boney, S Boney, but a lot of guys are using that one and they're getting some good results. And that's why I picked the scope. This is a 102 millimeter uh, refractor. And I did not use the um, front mounted, um, what is it called? The energy rejection filter. Because with the Daystar Cork, you're supposed to have energy rejection filter if it's, I think, over 80 millimeters. So, of course, on the front of here, I have a uh, UV IR blocker filter this on the front and I talked to a few other people on social media that have this same setup and they said they've been fine for almost a year and a half without using it but uh, maybe one day I'll get one but those things are very expensive too to add on to the front but as for right now it seems like it's doing pretty good for solar uh, finder scope it's one of these little uh, 3d printed models I got on Amazon you can see the Sun is on the little dot right here so it's just a little uh, 3d mounted one 3d printed one that I picked up but I'm glad I never sold this AVX mount. I was so close to selling this mount about two years ago because I wasn't using it. So I pulled it out, dusted off, got it set up, reused old power strip and old um, USB hub and stuff like that. And it's working pretty good. It's not perfectly pulled in line, but it's in a good ballpark. And this mount has been working pretty good as far as for solar. So with this chromosphere, uh, Daystar Cork will do allow you to see the prominence and stuff on the sun's surface. So you have to let it warm up for like 10 minutes. It has like a LED election when it's warm. And once you get the sun set up, um, of course, it's not like not a lot of activity today on the sun right now on the surface. But this is one of my older laptops. I'm just sitting here. You can see, of course, you can see. Um, it's not the perfect view with this camera, but you can see the sunspots and things and some. Uh, looks like activity on the surface right here. Let me see if I can move around and find some stuff. Yeah, I'm just trying to use this. I had to get the AVX hooked up to the computer where you can use the controls here to control it remotely and everything. Because so, what I've been practicing is I remote to this laptop after I get it set up from inside the house and start capturing from inside the house. So that is the surface of the sun right now. You can see not a whole lot of activity. If I turn the gain up, you might see some um, activity with exposure. Not a lot going on today. At the top, you see some stuff coming off the surface right there. Some little, I guess, prominence or small flares or activity right here. Some days you see stuff shooting way up coming from the sun surface and it looks amazing. Of course, you got to do videos and try to capture them. It's a whole new learning curve for me to learn right now with solar imaging and capturing because you have to do time lapse and try to catch everything. But it's very interesting to see the sun's surface, how active it is. Here's some stuff right here you can see coming up. Yeah, you can see some stuff right here shooting up from the surface. Now this is just a cell phone looking at the laptop screen, so it's not the best, but that is some activity coming off right there. And it's amazing when you actually sit here for a while and you see stuff forming and shooting up. It's like, whoa, it blows your mind that this stuff is shooting out into space. And most of the time it's actually larger it's shooting out further than the size of our whole entire planet let's move around the surface here see if there's anything at the bottom there's a little yeah a couple things at the bottom here and it's not a lot of activity today some guys some days you post i mean you can look around and it's a lot of stuff but yeah there's a little activity right here not a whole lot so I'm gonna turn the exposure back down to about nine milliseconds. 
Nope, I see as I move around the deck, everything jiggles and moves because it's not perfectly mounted. Mount here is just sitting on a wooden deck. I'm just scanning the surface a little bit. But I'm actually, I'm very happy with this purchase. Um, it's very interesting to see all this activity on the sun. And then you do, uh, the course, the nice photos and images and animations of just stuff moving around. It always amazes me how to see that kind of stuff in the sun. But yeah, that's it. Um, you can see it right here. But yeah, that's it for my um, latest gadget purchase for astrophotography. That's the Daystar Quark chromosphere right here and a ZWO monochrome camera. It's crazy how something like this can, you, it allows you to see that much activity from the sun. And you know, 10, 12 years ago, this kind of stuff wasn't around, but now it's here.